What are you doing here? I thought you'd be out on the front lawn selling the rest of my clothes. Oh, you'll be happy to know I cleared out the entire inventory at Alex's victory celebration. <laughs> you should be proud of the contribution you made to charity. I'm busting my buttons. I'm sure you want to get this over with as much as I do. So why don't we go inside? You can sign those papers and be a free man. <laughs> Just don't get it, do you, Cupcake? I ain't signing anything. We'll see. <laughs> Well, if it's important for you to move your session up... It is. All right, I'll juggle. Uh, how's 12.15? Well, that's, that's fine, thank you. Everything all right? Mm-hmm. Um, I've had some things come back to me, you know, memories. Uh, not very pleasant ones. I'll tell you about it when I see you. All right. Thanks again. Bye. I know there were conferences in school this morning, but shouldn't you be dressed for your classes this afternoon? I don't feel good. You don't feel good? Well, okay, I'll call school and tell them you're not coming in. Thanks, Mom. I was very happy to see you and Christian dancing at Alex's party last night, because I, I guess you had some sort of a misunderstanding. Uh, have you worked it out? No, no, um, not really. What's the problem? If you want to talk about it. I don't know. The problem is, everybody's growing up and they're having a great time doing it. Except me. Come on, have something to eat. Come on, I don't, I'm not. I'm gonna have some for Antonio too. He should be here very soon. Well, you're in a good mood this morning. Mm -hmm. Did you have a good time last night, Mom? What? Why are they made yours? He's not ever let you down before. Antonio, he'll be here. Just, uh, I know he knows it's the last day of the trial, so hang in there. Any word from Max? Uh, no, he left at dawn this morning with about eight other divers that he lined up. <sighs> I'd sure give our case a boost if he walked in here with a soaking wet gun. Excuse me. <clears throat> Excuse me. Good morning to you, too. Right. Should have gone for the deal. Why should we bargain down charges that my client is innocent of? You're gonna lose, Nora. After you, Counselor. Right. to run. Christian, if Andy Harrison gets convicted, next thing Antonio will get busted too. We are not going to let that happen. And how are we going to do that, Ma, huh? Are we going to hire the dream team to get him off? All these years Antonio was in prison, I never once went to visit him. I never answered any of the letters he sent me. 
I am not going to abandon my son now. I will fight everyone that I have to fight to keep him from going to prison again. It will be worse for Tonio if he, if he violates parole. We have to find Tonio. Who are you calling? Clint Buchanan. He can help. Why is he always the one? What's going on with you two? Is uh, Bo making any headway with Mick Manzo? No. I'm afraid it's taking a lot longer than he thought to make Manzo open up to him. The problem is we're running out of time. Javier Perez. That little hit boy turned a major witness around. And will be the reason that an honest cop goes to prison. All right. Oh, yay, oh, yay. The court of common pleas for Lantano County, Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, is now in session. Judge Barbara Fitzwater presiding. Does defense counsel have some new evidence to present to court? Defense requested 48 hours to search Lantano River off Pier 17. Yes, 17 for evidence. If counsel has not recovered the camera or the gun, then this court will proceed to closing arguments. Got it. Your Honor, may we approach? to meet one of the best divorce attorneys in this country, Mr. Horace Dunbar. Mr. Dunbar, I'd like you to meet my soon-to-be ex-husband, David Vickers. <clears throat> Mr. Dunbar's private detectives tell me that this affair with Madeline Helmore has been going on for some time. I do not know why that name keeps getting thrown around. There is no Madeline Helmore, at least not one that I know of. So the evidence says otherwise. The evidence is fake, Horace! I was faithful to you the entire time that you and I were married. Except that time. I was entrapped. By your rampant libido. By you and Blair. At least I think it was Blair. Oh, you see, Mr. Tunbar, he destroys our marriage vows, oh. humiliates me, and he doesn't even remember who it was with. Fortunately, your husband left an extensive paper trail of his adultery with Miss Helmore. Mm. Yes, indeed. I hope she was worth it, David, because she has cost you millions. Millions. Listen to me, Horace. Oh! She's entrapping me, okay? I'm telling you the truth, and I am not gonna let you get away with it. Fine. Take me to court. It'll be very expensive, David. I can afford it. Can you? Oh, come on. Cut your losses and sign these papers now. Oh, Mom, I'm so glad you're here. So am I. <laughs> you have an appointment with Dr. Hannon today, don't you? Well, I have time. Besides, I think I'd like to hear a little bit more about how you feel you're not growing up. No, no, I am growing up. I keep on getting taller, right? It's so beautiful. I just, I just don't feel like I'm doing it the right way, you know? In what way? I don't know. I, I feel like I'm retarded or something. No, no, not, not retarded, but like socially retarded. You know what I mean? Not quite yet, no. Okay, everybody has a boyfriend, right? And that's the way it's supposed to be. Supposed to be. Uh, and you want to be with him, right? That's totally normal. Normal? Wait a minute, are you... Uh, are you saying that, is it normal to want to be with a boyfriend? I mean, are you talking sexually? Because if you are, honey, I think you're too young. No, Mom. Oh, all right, okay. Then that's not what you asked me. No. Kind of. I don't know. It's like, I don't know, it's like everyone knows exactly what to do all the time, you know? And me, I... I don't even know what I want. No, no, I mean, I, I know what I want, but I just... 
Forget it, Mom. I can't believe I'm even talking to you about this. <laughs> you know something? You're doing just fine. Let me see if I got this straight, okay? You want to know if it's normal to want to kiss a boy and to be close to him. Yes. Yes. It's normal, okay? I don't, however, think that there is a set age at which you start having sex, okay? No. And even as far as kissing a boy goes, I think you have to go at your own pace. Yeah, my own retarded pace. Oh, Jesse. You know, in many ways, you grew up a lot faster than any of your friends. And in those ways, you are wise beyond your years. Yeah, right. I'm a genius. Well, honey, look at a lot of the things that you had to go through the last couple of years. Your parents got divorced. That made you grow up a lot faster than you ever wanted to, didn't it? Yeah, I guess. Yeah, it did. Believe me, it did. You had to face a lot of sadness and a lot of hard truths. And then, at a time when you really needed me to be around for you, um, I got sick and I wasn't there for you. And I do know how hard that was on you. And as a result, you're much more mature in some ways. Just don't feel that, you know, you have to grow up so fast where boyfriends are concerned. Honey, you have to do these things in your own time. You have to do what's right for you, okay? Trust your instincts. You have very good instincts. And above all, don't let anyone ever pressure you into doing something that you don't think is right, that you don't think you should, or you don't think you're ready for. Mom, nobody, nobody's doing that to me. Well, then don't pressure yourself. Believe me, you have the rest of your life to feel pressure. Gee, thanks. You know what you have to do? You have to enjoy your life the way it is now. You have to enjoy being a teenager. Don't let anyone rob you of these years, honey. Don't let anyone take away the freedom and the innocence of these years, because believe me, once they're gone, you don't ever get them back. You have time to study the world around you now. You, you can find out who you are, inside and outside. Find out what you want before you let somebody else tell you what you want. Honey, there's so much time ahead of you for you to deal with all the responsibilities of commitment and boyfriends. I promise you. I saw you kissing him. Tell me what's going on with you and him. You sound angry about seeing me with Clint. Well, why shouldn't I be? Why should you? Look, Ma, I, I, I know he stuck around when Antonio got stabbed and all that, but, but... Your father's been gone for a long time now, Christian. I know. She said, you always told me that the only man you would ever love would be Bob. Christian, I, I'm as surprised as you are about Clint. I... And we're really just starting to get to know each other. But... Just because... Just because you've never seen me in this situation before, Christian, it doesn't mean that I've changed. I'm still the same person. I know that. No. I'm... No, I think you forget. I'm very loyal to my friends, to my family, to the memory of my husband, always to the memory of Diego. But Christian, for me to kiss a man, that's not something careless. It means something. What's your read on that camera retrieval that Max pulled off? It's too little too late. Their testimony against Andy is pretty overwhelming. Yeah, sure, it's her camera, but that doesn't prove that Menzel dumped it. But Fitzwater is hard to second guess. Maybe she feels the evidence against Andy isn't conclusive enough to convict. Uh, either way, I'll get you a great story. Oh, I never doubt that. <laughs> okay. 
Hello. Clint? Oh, Carlotta. Uh, I'm sorry to disturb you. Well, you're not. Uh, what's up? I didn't know who else to call. And how do you know that? It has the LPD imprint underneath it. Uh, I logged it out in the record book. Defense Exhibit 17, Your Honor. Uh, for what purpose did you use this camera the last time it was in your possession? To photograph Nick Manzo selling the stolen goods from the police impound. There's no film in the camera. No. What happened to it? Manzo caught me with the camera, and he made me expose the film and throw it in the river. And then he made me throw the camera in as well. In order to destroy the evidence against him. Objection. No foundation cause for speculation. Sustained. Why did you throw the camera and the film into the river? Manzo made me. He was holding a gun on me. Thank you. Your witness. This camera has LPD stamped on it. It's plastic, it doesn't rust. Is there a question in there, Mr. Gannon? Yes, Your Honor, I'm getting there. Miss Harrison, would you say that there's any way to tell how long this camera was in the river? Objection, Your Honor, beyond the scope of this witness's expertise. Can you say, Miss Harrison, how long the camera was in the Lantano River? Since I threw it in the Lantano River. I see. So you could have thrown it in the river at any time, couldn't you? Damn it, Hank, you know that's not true. Now leave her alone. Sit down. For the questions. Horace, why don't you excuse us for a minute? It's all right, Horace. I'll be fine. Oh, would you... <laughs> oh, Dorian. I can always tell the police that the diary's a forgery. Only you don't have the diary. And without it, there's only your highly dubious word that the final entries in Irene's diary were forged. Come on, David. Accept the inevitable sign on the dotted line. <laughs> oh, I guess you need an incentive. Mm -hmm. All right. How about a check for $50,000? Call it pocket money. Why? Because I'm not without feelings. And in one way or another, you did touch me. no such person, Dorian, so don't even bother arguing. Okay. If it wasn't Blair that I slept with at the Bayberry, and there is no Madeline Helmore, then who did I sleep with? <laughs> There's been someone else around. Another altar. Tell me about this person. It's my father. You don't even seem surprised. No. DID patients often have the abuser as one of their altars. Well, the abuser is, after all, in the purest sense, a critical part of the system. Well, great. I'm right on schedule, then. How did you find out about this new altar? The night that I, um, you know, cut my arm, I had this feeling he was in the room. Oh, and 
But uh, since then, uh, a couple of times, I uh, I heard his. Well, I I heard myself speak in his voice. And it's only happened a couple of times, but I'm so afraid that I'm losing all the ground that I've gained, you know. Well, I think this is actually a good indication. It's a, a breakthrough for you, even to be aware of an altar. Is it a breakthrough or a breakdown, Susanna? You know, I can't keep having all these. I have absolutely no control over this altar. What if I slice myself up again? And what if this time I finish the job? Or worse, what if he hurts my children? But why do you think he would do that? Because he told me I was never, ever to tell anyone what he did to me. And I did tell. You know, I told you, and I told Clint, and I told Renee, and I told Dorian. And I even told my brother, Todd. I did it because I want to be able to deal with this incest openly. But he said he's going to destroy me if I keep talking. Destroy you? How? I don't know. I don't know. He just said he's going to reveal something that's going to destroy me. Me and my whole family. What in God's name could that be? How much worse is this going to get? Not only was the murder of Dwayne Dixon a brutal act, it was done for the lowest of motives, to protect the identity of Andrea Harrison so she could continue making money selling guns to children. Andrea Harrison hasn't offered one shred of evidence to refute the charges against her. She hasn't offered any evidence to support the claims that there was a second police accomplice to Detective Manzo. She hasn't even offered evidence against Detective Nick Manzo himself. And no other police officers came forward to back her up. No, you see, that job was left for a convicted murderer, Antonio Vega, who is not just her partner in crime, he is her partner in bed. Therefore, Your Honor, his testimony is useless to this court. Thank you. Thank you for bringing my homework by. I knew you couldn't live without your daily dose of brain food. In fact, just to stay in shape, why don't you write out your math homework twice? A copy for you and a copy for me. No. Oh, come on, Jessica. I'm in a deep yuck here. I've got conflicting engagements. Oh, could it be your homework and maybe Connor? Well, my parents are going out tonight. We're gonna try every bed in the house. Hi. Hi. Um, you weren't at school. No. Uh, so I, I figured that you might have been sick, so I, uh, I brought you this. Oh, thanks. <clears throat> that, was, that was really nice of you. Cool movie. Especially the part where they do it in the back of the car. I mean, talk about sex. <laughs> Lorna. Listen, I'm, I'm, I was just hoping that you'd feel better. I'm, I'm going to go back to school, hey, okay? Hey, don't let me get in your way. I'll go. You two have fun. Hey, you're good <clears throat> at art. Isn't that like kind of math? <laughs> Lorna. Uh, I don't think so, no. Because I could use some help in math. Lorna! I'm gone. <sighs> Bye, Chris. Make her feel better. Um, I'm really sorry you had to run into her. No, it's okay. I mean, I'm, I know she doesn't like me anyway. Doesn't matter, though. I mean, uh, <clears throat> as long as you still like me. Me like you? I thought you didn't like me. Why did we drink to the end of our marriage? Oh, and please, let's not talk about Madeline Helmore anymore. What difference does she make? I will tell you what difference she makes. I had sex with somebody at the Bayberry. It wasn't Blair. It wasn't some aberration named Helmore. All of this would be no consequence, Dorian, if it hadn't been the best make your eyes cross turn your brain to mush sex i've ever had 
Let's drink to that. Listen, I think you probably hired whoever she was, so yeah, how about a phone number? Don't get, just give me her, her real name, then. A latent fingerprint that maybe I forgot to wash off my body. Sex is funny, isn't it? It's hilarious. Who was she? You know, I mean, it's interesting what turns some people on. Mm. <laughs> Take me, for instance. I like to listen. I like to hear the sound of a man's breathing, the way it quickens. I love those little sounds. Not quite a breath. Not quite a moan. Oh, okay, so you don't like talkers. Mm, sometimes I like a talker. Especially when he says something like... You? That was you? Oh, Carlotta. I tried calling your house, but you'd already left. What happened? Did... Did you hear something about Antonio? He's here. Oh. He never left town. I reckon he changed his mind. Oh, I'm, I, I'm sorry. You see? I've dragged you into my problems again. I'm glad you called me. I want to help you, Carlotta. Whatever the problem. What is with this judge? What is your rush? I found the camera. A few more days of searching that river, I can find the damn gun. Be long gone. I couldn't do it. I couldn't run. Why not? Probably missed your only chance. Because of you. I couldn't do it because of you. Do you really think your brother left the state? I hope not. I mean, it. I'd hate to lose him again. I don't, I don't think he likes me. <laughs> nah, he just, he just thinks that she don't like me. And, uh, I started thinking that too. That Sweet Sixteen party, I, Jess, listen, I, I was only trying to show you how much I care about you. I wasn't trying to put any heavy moves on you. And then you just, you turned cold and stuff, and and I figured that you liked me okay, but for a friend, and that's it. Christian, no. I mean, no, that's not how I was feeling at all. Good. <laughs> Good, because, um, you know, it would, it would have been real sad if you did feel like that. Don't you know I never stopped thinking about you? <sighs> What's wrong? D nothing, nothing. I um, I guess I'm still not feeling well. Okay, that I mean that's 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 cool. I mean I, I I understand. It's okay. Just um, get better so I can see you in school tomorrow. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I um, I hope they find Antonio. Yeah. Feel better, okay? Bye. Bye. Vicky, when you called, you mentioned some memories that were disturbing you. Uh-huh. They're about uh, the night that he died. My father. See, at first I thought it was like an old dream or a vision or something, but now I'm quite sure it's a memory. Except that I only see fragments of the memory. Well, tell me some fragments. I see these hands holding a pillow. And they're pushing the pillow over my father's face, smothering him. I remember that a little while ago. And now recently I've remembered seeing him his face and his head, and he's fighting. He's trying to get away, and he's trying to push the hands away. It's awful. It's just awful. Yes, it must be. 
What I don't understand is why. I mean, all these years, all this time, I never, ever once had that memory. And now when I have it, it's so clear. But I don't see the face. Or your father's face? No, no, the face of the person pushing the pillow, the face of the person who's murdering my father. Why don't I see Dorian? Vicky, you have to remember your psychological circumstances at the time. You had been horribly abused by your father, even though you weren't aware of it at the time of his death. Now, maybe there was a part of you that wished him dead, and you felt guilty about that wish, and so you blocked it. Or maybe one of your altars actually saw the murder. And this is why the memory is coming back to you now. Because remember, you were not in contact and in touch with your altars then. Your parts weren't working in concert before. So I could ask the altar to share the memory, couldn't I? Yes. Yes. That is how we've progressed so far. Now, why don't you invite the part of you that saw this to write you a note or fill in the memory for you? You help Victoria remember. The people are right. Police corruption is a cynical abuse of power. And you're right. A corrupt officer should be shown no mercy. But that officer is not Andrea Harrison. Now, the prosecution's so-called mountain of evidence is really nothing more than an anthill. But let's sift through that anthill for a moment, shall we? Let's see. Andrea Harrison lures a hardened ex-con into an illegal gun-running deal right under the nose of the police commissioner who handpicked her to head up the investigation in the first place. And then after avoiding detection for several months, she uses the confusion of an unexpected gang fight to kill an unarmed gang member who, the prosecution speculates, could identify her as the gun seller. I'm impressed. This is the work of a seasoned master criminal, someone who can keep track of every detail and cover her trail. But then how could that same brilliant seasoned master criminal be so inept as to leave a spectacularly convenient trail of evidence? I I'm not a fan of conspiracy theories, Your Honor, but in this case, there's, there's no other conclusion to draw. This is a woman who became a law officer because she was devoted to serving her community wherever she lived. Committed to serving in Angel Square even after her sister-in-law was killed there. Is this a person who would then shoot a boy in cold blood? Steal guns from a police impoundment facility in order to sell death to the residents of Angel Square? No. No. This is a police officer, a woman who only wanted to do her job well, only wanted to get along with her colleagues. No one was more horrified than Andrea Harrison herself when she discovered it was her mentor, Detective Nick Manzo, who was the object of her investigation. And when she found that he had been dealing stolen guns, she kept silent because she naively believed him when he said he would turn himself in. He just, just give him some time, he said. Because he wanted to tell his sick little boy and his ex-wife, just give him some time. Well, Your Honor, please, do not punish this promising young officer for her simple yet fatal mistake of protecting a fellow officer, Nick Manzo. Of honoring that code of silence that Nick Manzo then turned against her. me up like that. You deserved it, you money-grubbing sleeve! I did Some more. 
more? No, no, no. Give me oh, that. Please. Give it. Just give it. No, allow me. Just wait. give it. I see. You know, maybe I was too hasty. You seem to uh, have some qualities that I overlooked. You're rather impressive yourself. It's a shame we didn't know that about each other sooner. You know, I, uh, I really think you want to get out of these wet clothes. David. Well, I don't want you to catch a cold. What do you say? <laughs> One last fling. Oh, For old time's sake. Pookie Bear. to die because Victoria no longer needs you and she doesn't want to keep you alive. You know nothing. I'm sorry you see things that way. Now, I'd like to get back with Vicky now. Vicky? so much. I can't leave her again. I'm glad that you feel that way. I have to learn the truth now, whatever it is. And once I do, then my father can't threaten me with it anymore. He can't use it against me. Mom, you're breaking my ribs. I knew you wouldn't run. Antonio, this time I swear to you, no matter what happens, I will stand by you. Thank you. Oh, Carlotta. Are you okay? Yes. Yes, I'm okay. Thank you. Thank you for asking. <laughs> Clint. Yes? Do you remember a while ago you... You asked me if I would go out with you. Yes, and you never did answer me. Well, I would like to go out with you. Very much. Oh. How's Bo? Oh, he's fine. He's just gone off by himself to, uh, you know, think over Alex's offer. Yeah. To become police commissioner. Well, listen, why don't you tell him that it'll, it will be a pleasure to work with him again, okay? Right. He's whistling. He's whistling. This whole damn case stinks. Hey, I'm just doing my job, Mr. Holden, and you sure did yours well finding that camera. You must be some diver. You dive? Great Barrier Reef. Well, gee, maybe we'll have to get together sometime and trade tales. Dylan, come on, let's find Andy go home. Well, looks like she's found the way home. So I'm gonna go to the community center. This might be our last chance together. Thank you. 